Okay, the last magazine of the night, and I feel like motor mouth at this point. This is Woman's World, November 8th of 2021. Whew. Have we made good time or what? Okay, so this Sunday is November 7th, and it is Zero Tasking Day, Take a Break Day, and it's also not in the book, but the day that Yellowstone makes its return for season four on the Paramount Not Network, starting at 7 p.m., two-hour premiere. Don't miss it, people, because it's rip. And I actually have a shirt prepared for Sunday. Uh-huh. We're celebrating Yellowstone, me, myself, and I. I have saved this shirt back, especially for when season four comes out, and it says, got a problem, send rip. And it's got rip on it. So... Guess what? That's what I'm wearing because this episode is supposed to be known as Rip's Revenge. Just a side note. When I get to talking about Yellowstone, I just get lost. Anyway, uh, November 7th through 13th is National Animal Shelter Appreciation Week. Thank you, animal shelters. Especially if you're no-kill shelters. I hate the, the ones that literally kill the animals. I think that's horrible. Um, let's see. On the... 11th, of, which is a Thursday, it's National Sunday Day, so be sure to pick up a Sunday. On November 10th, uh, sorry about that, it's also uh, Veterans Day on November 11th. Thank you, veterans. And they didn't mention that in the book. On November 10th is Wednesday, it's Forget Me Not Day, so relax and reconnect with old friends and old family members. Uh, on the 12th, it's Happy Hour Day, you don't need to celebrate that. Okay, riddle of the week. This is to pick your brain. What has teeth but doesn't bite? Now remember, this item's got teeth, but it cannot bite you. Think on that. Start your week with a laugh. You're at a pharmacy. Side effects include pretending to swallow, then spitting them out. That's two dogs talking to each other at the pharmacy. Here's a cute little joke for you. What do you call a sleeping T-Rex? A dinosaur snore, S N O R E. Isn't that cute? Uh, we have, it uh, looks like a neighbor talking to another neighbor while the gentleman's bringing something up from downstairs. It says, We have a new exercise routine. I moved the refrigerator to the basement and the TV to the attic. That's kind of cute. Now for the riddle of the week What has teeth but does not bite? A comb. That's right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in on that one. And if you take, took a guess and you was right, thank you for that as well. Okay, Power of Love. I am going to cover this story. It's, these majestic horses help heal our wounded warriors. And in Quine Escape, veterans form a loving bond with horses, which give these brave heroes a sense of calm and hope. It's an honor to help such men and women who sacrifice so much become whole again, says Rachel. Riding helps to build their confidence that makes them feel in control. Just a nuzzling horse can bring a sense of calm. Riding also helps build core strength and balance. Now let's read the article. That's just all the captions from the pictures. Horseback riding helped Rachel Gilmore through a difficult childhood and later helped her heal from a debilitating illness. Grateful and amazed, Rachel wanted to share these miracles with others. And today she is a corral full of horses that offer hope and healing to other troubled souls, including hundreds of military heroes. With a boost, Rachel settled atop her beloved horse, Pallet, and suddenly all the pain and weariness of the past two years faded away. I feel alive again, Rachel thrilled. Her heart was filling with hope. Things will get better, she realized, and she had just th had one thought. I wish I could sh share this feeling with others who are hurting. Four-legged therapy. From the time she was a child, horses had been Rachel's solace. Growing up, was spent countless hours at the farm across the road from her Goodrich, Michigan home, helping care for the riding horses at just ten. Using her saved birthday money, she bought her first horse named Saba. Became her best friend and confident, especially when her mom remarried and her stepdad turned abusive. Eventually, her mom got the courage to leave, but all the turmoil that Rachel headed down was the wrong path in high school. But through everything, Saba remained her anchor and her bond that helped Rachel get back on track. After graduation, she studied equine management at the Science, and over years worked a variety of animal-related jobs, and every chance she had went riding with Saba and her full palate. Then in 2010, Rachel grew weak, so she had, could barely get out of bed. It took her two years to be diagnosed with common variable immune deficiency, in which the body doesn't produce antibodies to bacteria and viruses. During the darkest days, the one thing that kept Rachel going was the horse. She struggled to stable, 
to the stable, being able to touch him and nuzzle the soft mane lifted her spirit as she came to terms with her illness. Now filled with gratitude, she decided, I'm going to build a place where these wounded souls can experience the same kind of healing love of the horse. Making miracles. In 2016, with her husband, Ted Gilmore, as partner, Rachel opened the Equine Escape at equineescapeinc.org, welcoming special needs and at-risk youth and also wounded warriors. When I get anxious or I start holding my breath, but I, when I ride, I can feel my horse breathing, and I start breathing with her, so I get calm, says Melissa Everett, an Army vet who suffers from bipolar disease and PTSD. Since returning home, Rick Young, a veteran who served in Iraq and had been stampeding his way through life, always pushing himself and others, but the draft horse he chose uh, insisted on setting the pace. I pushed and pulled and nothing worked. I finally threw up my hands, the lesson acknowledged. When Kent Thomas, who has spent a year in Afghanistan, told Rachel he wasn't sleeping, she gave him a series of exercises. Lean forward, let your body rest against the horse neck. She began, then turn around and lie on your back with your head toward the, her flanks. I had to trust, and I had to give myself over to the horse completely, Kent said. When it was over, I climbed into my car and bawled like a baby. At home, I slept like a baby 14 hours straight. Now, whenever I start feeling edgy, my wife tells me it's time to visit the horses. You don't realize how many issues you have until you have to get surrounded by a horse and feel comforted by them, says Stephanie G., a wounded warrior who now volunteers at We Equine Escape. Rick agrees. My horse, Gretel, is a great listener, and she's an even better friend, he says. Rachel smiles, smiles knowingly. You can't hide your feelings from a horse, she says, and they don't care what you look like, where you come from, or your financial status. Their unconditional love and acceptance heals hearts and souls. Bill Holton is the author. And he has, there's three unique ways to service animals that will help heal. They ease PTSD symptoms. Studies show that bonding with animals elevates levels of feel-good hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin improves trust and helps overcome paranoia and other PTSD symptoms, says Meg Daly Almert, director of research at Warrior Canine Connection. That means that each service animal that a veteran comes in contact with can help heal them, the mind, body, and the soul. It slashes stress. Just 15 minutes of positive interaction with a service animal, whether it belongs to you or not, can ease anxiety up to 24% and cut stress by 40%. How it works reducing the stress hormone cortisol, says Harvard Research, plus a study at the England University of Leeds found that simply watching videos of cute animals lowers your stress by 50%. Decreased depression. A survey of the Human Animal Bond Research Institute. Hi there, Heathcliff. Uh, found 74% of the animals who spend time with animals report mental health benefits of lower symptoms of depression. How? The animal provide comfort, companionship, key elements in breaking that depression cycle. Okay, we go through a bunch of the book here. Okay. It's such a good book, chock full with information. Please be sure to check this book out. Okay, Spirit Lifters on seven days of inspiration take one day and feel great feel great all week on day one small kindness equals big impact day two you always make a difference day three there's power in every pr prayer day four you don't have to change a thing to be amazing day five something beautiful happens every single day Day six, a spark of hope is all you need to bring a dream to life. Day seven, you've done so much good. And an instant awe. Take a moment to leave your worries behind and lose yourself in the loveliness. Autumn colors remind us that we all are one dancing in the wind. Lori Morgan Richards. Okay, you, a moment for you. You are a lifesaver. You are someone's calm in a storm, someone's sunshine on a cloudy day, someone's north star on the darkest night. You are someone's inspiration, motivation, an angel on earth, someone who lights the way with love and hope, someone who makes life good by just being you. And a five-minute romance because we know that's exactly how long romance lasts. Five minutes. Coming home to true love. Back in town for the homecoming parade, Kaylin is shocked to find her high school sweetheart in the crowd and ready for a new chance at love. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's homecoming king and queen, Ben Carter and Maya McDonald. The parade goers around Kaylin Halstead cheered as the float moved by slowly. Ben and Maya smiled and waved, just as Kaylin done those years earlier. It feels like a lifetime ago, she thought, tugging at her flowered blouse. 
Since moving back to her hometown a few months prior, Kaylin had been out of hadn't been out too much. Her best friend Judy had begged her to attend the homecoming parade, but a sore throat kept Judy home in bed. Something she neglected to share with Kaylin until she was already street side and the band was marching by. So she stayed alone again, the same way she'd been the man when the man she thought her was her only one true love suddenly decided that he, quote, needed time to find himself and moved away. Forcing her to return home with her tail between her legs, Kaylin was so lost in her thoughts that she barely registered the hand on her lower back until a deep voice spoke into her ear. Remember when that was us? Kaylin's breath caught in her throat. She knew that voice, even though it had been years since she heard it. Straightening her back, blowing out a slow breath, she answered without slowly turning around. Of course I remember. We won states that year. We did, didn't we? said the voice. Those were the days. They were indeed. Kaylin finally turned around. Hi, Dex. Hi, Kay, he said, smiling down at her. There was more stubble along his jawline and a few more pounds around his middle. But the light in Dex's blue eyes and the warmth in his smile were the same the day they rode the float together back in high school. It made Kalen's head spin. I heard you was back, said Dex. I also heard about what happened. I'm sorry about Jared. Kalen sighed. Me too. How's Courtney? I wouldn't know. We split up two years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. The news made Caitlin's stomach flutter. It was the first time she and Dex were single at the same time since they'd broken up their senior year. A breakup that she believed was the right decision at that time, but one whose reasons had faded from her memory as the years passed. Standing in front of him now, she couldn't remember a single one. It's okay, said Dex. She wasn't the one for me. As he spoke, Dex looked straight into Caitlin's eyes. Sending her heart racing, she broke eye contact before it could jump out of her chest. Remember that tuba incident during the, our parade? Ah, uh, yes, Dex's eyes crinkled at the corners. I'm not sure who was more traumatized, the tuba player or the band director, when we, he finally realized it was his two sons throwing the popcorn. Kaylin giggled and stepped closer to Dex. Just being near him made her feel 18 again, when she was so filled with optimism for the future. She lost some of that hopefulness in recent months, but perhaps Dex could help her find it again. Listen, Dex, she said, would you want to get a cup of coffee with me? She met his gaze and held her breath. No, I don't want to get a cup of coffee with you. That pressure had, that descended on Caitlin's chest lifted as quickly as Dex continued. I'd like to get lunch with you, and then dinner with you, and then maybe if I'm lucky we could get that coffee together. Pink filled Caitlin's cheeks as she drew her hand up to cover it, Dex gently reached out and took a twi her wrist and placed her hand back by her side. I've been thinking about you ever since I heard you was back, he said. The person I was when we were together, that was my favorite version of myself. I want to be that person again. I want to be that girl again, too. She turned her head, hand so he could wave her fingers through his and smiled when they squeezed. Great, said Dex, relief and elation in his voice, but first... Let's go throw Cracker Jacks at the French horns. Caitlin laughed, taking her hand back so she could offer her elbow. My king. Dex smiled and looped his arm through hers. My queen. Yeah, cheesy, corny, but hey, it is a story. Okay. Now, your horoscope. For the week of Sunday, November 7th through Saturday, November 13th, May It Be Good for Everybody by Marissa Brown. Now, that's the same one that did the first magazine, if you're wondering, so just stay tuned here. Scorpio, October 23rd through November 21st. On the 10th, your energy is going to soar, making it a great time to tackle projects. Carve out solo time to dive in. And on the 12th, you're going to be feeling emotionally sensitive. Channel those feelings into a creative outlet. Your lucky days, November 7th, 12th, and 13th. Your lucky numbers, 5, 9, and 14. Sagittarius, November 22nd through December 21st, you're going to be craving rest along the side of love when on the 7th, it's a beautiful moment to prioritize your needs. Come the 13th, you may feel overwhelmed by the pace of the day. Take it slow and one debt step at a time. Your lucky days will be November 7th, 10th, and 11th. Your lucky numbers, 4, 6, and 12. If you're a Capricorn, which is December 22nd through January 19th, on the 9th, 
Dive into a group project. Working with others has you feeling connected. You're productive. Then help others in your community on the 12th. Volunteering may be the perfect way to share your kind heart. Your lucky day is November 8th, 9th, and 12th. Your lucky numbers, 3, 10, and 11. If you're an Aquarius, January 20th through February 18th, make a point to connect with loved ones on the 11th. Emotional conversations can spur healing. And on the 13th, sharing your most brilliant idea with co-workers could set you down a rewarding new path. Your lucky days, November 7th, 9th, and 12th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 10, and 11. If you're a Pisces, which is February 19th through March 20th, you're going to feel like soaking up knowledge on the 8th. You let your mind wander. You'll be feeling satisfied spiritually. Then enjoy a burst of confidence to pursue your passion on the 10th. Believe in yourself. It can lead to a win. Your lucky days are November 11th, 12th, and 13th. Your lucky numbers are 1, 3, and 9. If you're in Aries, March 21st through April 19th, come the 9th, have a heartfelt conversation with a loved one. The experience can have you leaving, can have you feeling centered. And on the 12th, prioritizing self-care spurs creativity. You'll be able to channel your spiritually blah, 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 fulfilling project. Your lucky days are November 7th, 10th, and 11th. Your lucky numbers 8, 12, and 17th. Taurus, that's April 20th through May 20th. Tackle a t challenging project alongside a loved one on the 11th. Your enthusiasm delivers exciting results on the 13th. Your energy could be amplified. Put it toward chores and lose your ends. You're been meaning to get to your lucky days, November 7th, 8th, and 9th. Your lucky numbers, 1, 7, and 16. Gemini, which is May 21st through June 20th. You'll feel it easy. Change your routine on the 10th. Adding in a daily walk or exercise boosts your vitality on the 11th. Tune into your intuition when it comes to a goal close to your heart. You're going to know how to proceed. Your lucky days, November 7th, 10th, and 11th. Your lucky numbers, 6, 9, and 15. Cancer, June 21st through July 22nd. On the 7th, share your most creative ideas with your coworkers. You're going to feel more motivated to run with them. Then check in. Uh, with your big picture goals on the 12th, journalizing me or meditation can be gratifying now. Your lucky days, November 11th, 12th, and 13th. Your lucky numbers, 5, 9, and 14th. If you're a Leo, which is April 23rd through August 22nd, and yours truly, time with loved ones could lead to a stimulating conversation on the 9th, the moment that sets the stage for sweet bonding. Come the 13th, you'll be in tune with your emotions, tap into a Land an inspiring goal. Your lucky days will be November 7th, 12th, and 13th. Your lucky numbers will be 4, 8, and 17th, of course, because RIP will be on TV on the 7th. Virgo, that's August 23rd through September 22nd. Break free of your routine on the 8th. An adventure with friends or loved ones will do the trick. And on the 12th, you'll feel extra tuned in to loved ones' emotions, initiating Meaningful conversations can bring you even closer. Your lucky days are November 8th, 10th, and 12th. Your lucky numbers, 5, 7, and 9. Libra, which is September 23rd through October 22nd. Research a new approach to money-making on the 10th. Trust your gut to lead the way. Come the 11th, add a new mind-body practice to your day. Even a simple morning stretch. Routine can have you feeling rejuvenated. Your lucky days, November 9th, 10th, and 11th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 6, and 12. Okay, I did not mark this, but I'm marking it now. You deserve good things. Precious treasures are headed your way. Happiness, success, check, love, and friendship, or of course, new beginnings, happy endings, naturally. Blessings galore, absolutely. There's no reason at all you won't enjoy these gifts and more. Believe you're worthy and you deserve them all. Okay, on the love and laughter page, we have a great page over here. We have a dog. That's got a stack of hay in front of him. It says, Don't I Look Fetching, submitted by Lacey Peterson in Pennsylvania. We have a little boy that's wearing red, white, and blue gingham. He's in a pumpkin patch. It says, Elijah, 19 months, submitted by Mother Jennifer Ortiz in Michigan. We have two trees. One has two bird uh, houses hanging off of his branches, and it says, I love your earrings. Uh, we have a psychological clinic cartoon, a bird on the... Uh, couch so to speak and we have a person behind the bird it says what makes you think you can solve all your problems by fi fi flying south we have a beautiful little leopard her name is Lux in leopard uh, Brianna seven months submitted by grandmother Joanne Gibbs from South Carolina we have a little boy who's staring at a bubble in a field of leaves and it says can't burst my bubble Ambrose one submitted by mother Katie Swoba from Oregon 
their shockingly adorable Brooklyn, two years old, submitted by great uncle Chris Musum from Ontario. She's like in a ball pit and her hair's just going blonde crazy. It's adorable. Okay, and the quote that we will end on is a sunrise and sunset reminds us of new beginnings, the power of a hope and a better tomorrow. Richard Kaziski. Woo, we made it, folks. All four magazines are going to go to the bag to donate to Miss Deb so she has some good reading. And I'm so excited for that. I think that's going to be fun. And, of course, I haven't given her any Halloween candy. I thought about that the other day. I'm like, I gave her a little uh, bobblehead solar thing, but I didn't throw a bag of candy in there. So I'm going to throw a bag of candy in there with her uh, books tomorrow to make up for it. So, anyway, love you all. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you soon. We'll leave it at that. Okay, God bless. And until next time, stay well, stay healthy, wash those hands, keep your social distance, and shoot yourself. I don't mean shoot yourself literally. Go get your vaccine. Love you. Stay healthy, stay positive, stay upbeat.